Hello everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this duster vest type of thing that you see in the picture there. So I had to, I, I made it without sleeves, as you can see in one of the pictures. And then I had to go back and readjust some things to make it with sleeves. But I wanted everybody to have the option to make it with or without sleeves. And the sleeves, you can make them as long or as short as you like, or like in the picture uh, one of the pictures is leave them off completely because I know people like different things. Um, so I do, even though it takes a bit more time, I want to give people the options or show them, show you at least how to make the sleeves and then you can continue to make them as long as you'd like. So it's very, very easy. You can do this. Now, if you are a beginner, but you know how to do like um, the basic stitches, single crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, there you go. You got this. I'll show you how to do the rest. Don't think that you can't. Can't is the worst word in the world because you can. It's so, it might look hard. It might look it, but it's not. So it's made with one big back panel and then two front side panels. And they are seamed here, but we seam them on the wrong side there. So you can't see the seam and then we see them up here at the top as well there's the inside seam and then sleeves if you want them are added later um and you can make this as long or as short as you want as well you don't have to make it long you can make it a short shirt doesn't matter to me it's your piece you're making it you do it how you like it i always say i lay it out and then just for you to play it out to your likings. I'll show you the basics. I'll show you how I did mine. You change it up to make it like, make it how you want it. If you want it like mine, cool, do it like mine. But if you want it different, do it different. You do it how you like it. You're wearing it, I'm not wearing it, All right? And then we make these two ties. You totally, you can leave them off. I do give you other options of things you could use if you want to put something here, but you don't want ties. But yeah, tie a little bow. Got some beads at Walmart. Show you how to string those on. So, do you guys want to do it? So, I want you guys to refer to the description box of this video. Because it's going to have different sizes. Different chain accounts. For, you know, you can look at the size, sizes, the measurements. There's gauge, swatch, all types of stuff for you to decide. Uh, what size that you want to make and it'll give you the stitch counts the chain number that you need to you know the, to start with um, make, you know probably be good if you do that gauge I would say I don't gauge things because I make my own stuff you know but if you're you know clothing it's probably kind of important to do a gauge swatch so it make, you make sure your tension's matching up to mine so you don't have a completely different size yes but description below will have measurements for multiple different sizes and um you, you refer to that so you know what chain count to start with and you can determine how big you want it to be. Maybe you want yours to be looser than what mine is. You just you know, go up a bigger size than what you would normally wear, you know. And, but as I will tell you, uh, the my daughters were in the, my oldest daughter's in the picture of the thumbnail. My oldest daughter is wearing the one without sleeves and I am pictured with the one with sleeves. Okay, we are both 5'3", and we both um, are about the same size. So, um, we both would wear a lady size small. So, um, yes. So, that's what this one is. This is a size uh, small, um, I would say. I don't mean to make the intro so big, but I just want you to understand that you can do this and you can change it to your liking or you can make it exactly like mine. It is completely up to you. You do what you do, what you like. I only teach you how to do the base, the main portion of it. After that, it's all on you. And if you make it just like mine, that is cool too. All right, get that yarn needle out of the way and I'll show you what yarn we used. All right, so this particular uh, vest or was used uh, I really really like this yarn and my gosh this gold is gorgeous but whatever yarn that you use is going to be gorgeous as well um, this is the lucky brand yarn that I purchased this online at Joann's I do believe it is so sold in Joann's stores as well 
It is 100% a bamboo. All right. And there are 310 yards or 284 meters per ball. Now, this is classified as a lightweight number three. Now, the, and the color I have here is called Dijon. Yes. It is the shiniest, beautiful, most beautiful Dijon mustard I've ever seen. It's really nice. I like it. It's so soft and drapey. So, yes, you don't have to use this yarn. You don't have to use bamboo. Um, any lightweight three will be fine. Um, but like I mentioned in the description, or like I mentioned, if you look in the description, there will be a gauge there of this particular yarn. So if you want to use a two weight or, you know, a four weight or something, you would have to gauge up to that. Um, so use whatever yarn you want, you know, that's, I always say that, you don't have to use what I use. And also in the description, you'll find the amount of yarn that, amount that you will need for your particular size. And like I said, um, I'll have the amount that I use for this, the size that you see in the picture, also the measurements of the size of the one that you see in the picture. So you can kind of look at that and get the gist. Of, of you know I told you how big I was and all all that kind of all that jazz and then we are going to be using a size I which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook I will mention if you see me using different colored hooks throughout the video just know they are all a size I um, I made this over a few days so um, Sometimes I just pick whatever I hook up that is next to me and is not always the same color, especially if I'm recording at different times. So just know it is a size I, even if it's like blue or green. It's hard telling what color it is. I don't even know if I, I just wanted to mention that. All right. So why don't we go ahead and get started on this? Okay. Remember, you got this. You can do anything if you know the basic stitches of crochet, especially this. It's easy. Let's do this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to crochet this stitch. And I'm going to show you on a smaller scale. So please remember that um, in the description box, there will be everything you need to know um, for to make sizes small up to 5X. So you just look in the description box and find your size or, you know, the measurement that you want to make. And um, it'll tell you the stitch count or the chain count that you need to start with and how much yarn you'll need and, you know, approximately how much yarn you'll need. And there's gauge watch down there. It talks about the vest I'm wearing, how big it is, and, you know, the size I am and everything like that. Everything you could, you could want will be in the description box. All right. So we'll go ahead and start off. Now, this uh, stitch that I'm doing is, in case you want to use it for something else, it is done in a multiple of six plus two. But if you're not doing it for something else, um, all the numbers will be in the description box. Um, now, this is the stitch that this uh, vest is made with. It's called the Crow's Foot Lattice Stitch. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, what we're going to do first, once you get your chain um, amount done, we are going to do a, a base uh, foundation row. Okay, so we're not going to count it as row one. We're just going to say that it's our our base row or our foundation row. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet in the second stitch on the hook. So we do not count this one that or this one that's on our hook. This would be number one and this would be number two. Go into that and single crochet. And we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch across for our base foundation row. Or our base row, foundation row, whatever you call it. So it's just one single in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, so we made it to the end of our foundation row here. So we're going to go ahead and start row one. Okay. And we're going to start row one off with a chain of five. One, two, three, four, five and five. Now that chain five is counting as a triple crochet plus a chain one here and for the rest of the stitch if we use it again. Um, and we are going to turn our work like that. And now we're going to do a double crochet 
back into the first stitch. So we're going to yarn over and go right back into that first stitch and double crochet. Just like that. All right, now we're going to do a chain of one and then we're going to skip two, skip, skip. Now we're going to start the repeat of row one. We are going to put a single crochet into the next stitch like that and then we're going to chain one. We're going to skip two, skip, skip and then we're going to put um, what I'm calling, I'm just going to call it a shell, it's a type of a shell, into the next stitch. So we skip two, skip, skip and the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet, a chain of one and then we're going to work a triple crochet back into that same stitch and a chain of one and then we're going to work a double crochet back into that same stitch like that so that's kind of the, what I'm going to call a shell for this pattern it's a double a chain one triple chain one and a double and then we are going to chain one after that and start again we're going to skip two skip skip and single crochet into the next then we're going to chain one skip two, skip, skip, and shell into the next. So we double crochet and chain one. And then we triple crochet into that same stitch and chain one. And go back in and double crochet into that same stitch. Repeat it, we're gonna chain one, skip two, skip, skip, single into the next chain one skip two skip skip and shell into the next so we're going to keep repeating this pattern until we get near the end of the row Skip two, single, chain one, skip two, and shell in the next. All right, so I'll meet you near the end of row one. All right, so I'm coming to the end. I just did a single crochet and I have three stitches that remain. What I'm going to do is chain one, skip two, and then in the last stitch, I'm going to put a double crochet. a chain of one and then a triple crochet back into that same stitch and this is going to end row one of our uh, stitch see that all right so now we're going to start row twos so row two starts the repeat row for the for the pattern it's rows two three four and five it's a four row repeat but they're very similar to each other they're just kind of like catty cornered from each other so We'll go ahead and start uh, row two by chaining one and turning our work. And we're gonna put a single crochet into this very first stitch. All right, and now we're gonna start the repeat of row two. We're going to chain one and we're gonna put one triple crochet into the next single crochet. So right here. We're gonna do our little crow foot, crow, crow's foot now, all right? So we're gonna triple crochet into the single crochet. Like that. And then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna double crochet, but we're not gonna go back into the same stitch. We're gonna go into these two loops on the bottom of this triple crochet. So let me show you, yarn over like you're gonna do a double. Don't go back into the same stitch grab these bottom two loops of this triple crochet like that and then do your double crochet right there in that spot and that's how you do the little crow's foot 
See that? All right. And then we're going to chain one. And we are going to put a single crochet into the triple crochet from the previous row. So the shell from the previous row, that middle one is the triple. We're going to put a single crochet into that. And that's what we're going to repeat. So we're going to chain one again. And then we're going to do our little uh, crow's foot here in this single crochet down here. So we're going to triple crochet into it. And we're going to chain one. And then we're going to double crochet, but we're going to go into those two bottom loops of that triple that we just made, just like that. See that? And do our double crochet right there. And then we made another cross foot. And then we're going to chain one. And single crochet into the triple crochet of the previous shell. So that that middle stitch there is the triple. We're going to single crochet and repeat. Chain one. Come down here to this single crochet. We're going to do our little crow's foot. So we're going to triple crochet into that single. And we're going to oh, chain one. And then we're going to double into those bottom two loops there. See that on the side of the triple. Double crochet. There's our crow's foot again. Chain one and single crochet into the triple crochet, the middle stitch of the shell. Chain one and repeat. All right, we're just going to keep repeating this pattern. Um, and so we get near the end of row two. All right, so I'm coming to the end of the row. I just did a crow's foot here in my last single crochet, and then I chain one afterwards. Now here's this chain five from the previous previous row. We're going to do a single crochet in the fourth chain of that chain five, or somewhere around there. Doesn't have to be exact. There we go. That ends row two. All right, let's go ahead and start row three. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to put a single crochet right back into that very first stitch. Just like that. And then we are going to start the repeat of row three. We're going to chain one. And then we are going to do our shell right here in the chain one space of our cross foot. All right. So we're going to double crochet into that spot and chain one. And then we're going to triple crochet into that same spot. Oops, sorry, I lost that triple crochet. Do that again. The yarn slippery. Butterfingers. Chain one and then a double right back into it. So that was the shell we just did. Double, chain one, triple, chain one, double. And we did it right there in that chain space of the crow's foot. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet on in the, sing, the next single crochet. So right into the single crochet, we're going to single crochet. And then we're going to repeat again. We're going to chain one and in the space of the crow's foot from the previous row, we're going to work a shell. So we're going to go right into the space and we're going to do a double crochet, chain one. And then we're going to do a triple crochet. chain one and one more double back into that same spot just like that so we got the shell there in the crow's foot we're going to chain one and then we're going to come over here to the next single crochet right here and we're going to single crochet into that single crochet and this is what we're going to repeat until we get near the end of the row again chain one and a shell right here in the chain one space of that crow's foot. So double, chain one, go back in and triple, chain one, and 
double back in again chain one and single crochet into the next single crochet chain one and repeat so we're just going to keep repeating this pattern it looks really cool um until we get near the end of row three all right so i'm coming to the end of the row and i just did a shell here into my last crow's foot so I'm going to chain one and we're going to end row three by putting a single crochet into our last stitch, which is a single crochet from the previous row. So go ahead and single crochet in that and that ends row three. So we'll go ahead and start row four and we're going to do a chain five. One, two, three, four, five and turn our work and then we're going to go back in and we're going to double crochet into that same stitch. So that same single crochet, double crochet, like that. And now we're gonna start the repeat of row four. We're gonna chain one, and we're gonna put a single crochet into the next triple crochet. So the middle stitch of the shell from the previous row, right here. And then we're gonna chain one, and then in this single crochet right here, we're going to do our crow's foot. So we're going to do a triple crochet. Chain one and then double into those two side loops down here at the bottom of that triple. Just like that. And there's our crow's foot. And then we're going to chain one and repeat. We're going to single crochet into the triple crochet, the middle stitch of our shell from the previous row. Chain one, and we're gonna do our crow's foot right down here in this single crochet. Triple into the single, chain one, and then we go back and double down here at the bottom two loops of that triple. And that completes our crow's foot. Repeat, chain one, single crochet into the triple crochet, the middle stitch of the shell. Chain one, and do the crow's foot into the single crochet. So we're just gonna keep repeating this pattern for row four until we get near the end of the row. All right, so I'm coming to the end of row four. I just did a single crochet into this uh, last triple crochet, the middle stitch of the shell. I chained one after that. Now we're going to end the row by doing a double crochet into the last stitch. Then we're going to chain one and go back and triple crochet into that same stitch. And that ends row four. So we're going to do row five, which is the final repeat row. So we are going to chain five again. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to turn our work. Just like that. Okay. And we're going to put a double crochet back into that very first stitch. Okay, just like that. Okay, and now we're going to chain one, like that, and then we are going to find our next single crochet, which is right here, and we're gonna put a single crochet into it. Just like that. And then we're going to start the repeat. We're going to chain one. And we're going to be working inside this uh, crow's foot stitch here. And we're going to work a shell inside that. So we're going to go into it again, just like the rose part, the row part. We're going to double crochet, chain one, go back in and triple crochet. 
chain one, and one more time, and double crochet. Just like that. Then we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet in the next single crochet. Chain one, and repeat. So it's very similar to the rose part. So in this cross foot right here, we're going to do a shell, double, chain one, uh, triple, chain one, and double. Just like that, all into that cross foot. Then we're going to chain one and a single crochet into the next single crochet. Chain one and repeat. We will do our shell into the crow's foot, chain one, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain one, and I'll meet up with you near the end of the row. All right, so I've come to the end of row five. I just did a single crochet into the last single crochet. I'm going to chain one. Now in the fourth chain of our chain five, we are going to work a double crochet A chain one and then a triple crochet back into that same spot and that will end row five and that will end the repeat rows now we just repeat rows two three four and five until you get to your desired length everybody's length can be different you can make this short you can make it go all the way to the ground and that is completely up to you now you see me in the picture there i'm five foot three um and you see where it goes to on me um and the panels that i'm wearing have a total of 58 rows that's not including that foundation row so not including that it's 58 total you want to end no matter how long you make it though remember you do that however you want you uh, want to end on a row to repeat okay so you want to go ahead and do make your back panel and your two side panels in accordance to your size down there and remember you make them as long as you want ending on a row two just make sure you make all three panels the same amount of rows all right all right so now you want to take your pieces here you can sew them together any way you like you know it's your piece but i did mm, gonna do mine um where the shells i guess the shell looking things go downward so i'm gonna sew along the first row of single crochet there that we did and also if there's a right or a wrong side that you like to me they both look pretty dang similar <laughs> but if there happens to be a right or a wrong side that you notice that you like um put the um let's see um i'm not sure here what i did okay i guess uh just do whatever <laughs> um no if the um, it's really hard to tell which is which so i guess it probably doesn't even matter but um for real so if if there's a right or wrong side that you like better uh the very the back panel put the right side facing up and then the two uh smaller front panels put the um wrong side facing up that way when we seam it together and we f we would i already got one seam and we flip it the right side of both uh will be facing i actually think i did mine backwards but you know what i did i did it backwards but you can't really tell can you no if someone walks up to me that close and notices that, that those shells are different hey that's on them because it's kind of weird so this is what we're going to do all right so put the top of your work facing you like i said you could do it where the shells go down or up it's up to you but i chose to do sew on where the shells are going to go down um so I'm, I'm sewing on to the single crochet row the very first one so remember mine's facing wrong side out right now so when i flip it there there's the seam 
I know, okay, so the shelves, they're going downward right now. So I'm going to take my piece and figure out which side I think is the wrong side. I have it the same. Who knows? Who knows? I go, they don't know. All right, I'm going to go like, I'm going to do this, I guess. Okay, so for the top panels up here, I'm going to slip stitch them together. And then... When I do the side panels, I'm going to use a yarn needle and a piece of yarn. Um, since I did this side already, um, I, I will say I found it a bit hard just to make sure everything stayed lined up correctly. But, well not really hard, just you had to pay close attention. Okay, so up here you just want to match your stitches. So I'm just going to stick my hook into the first stitch here on the end. And then the first stitch on the end of front piece up here. Pull your yarn through. Up, like that. Alright. Like I said, I'm going to slip stitch. So I'm just going to chain one there at that first spot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my next stitch on this piece. So I'm going to go into it. My hook matches my yarn. Then I'm going to find the exact same stitch on the other piece. And I'm going to go into it. And I'm going to slip stitch. But you don't want to slip stitch too tight. Keep them, you know, just normal to looser versus tighter. And then just go into the next stitch at the top here. It's, it's easier... Uh, like this if you're doing it with the shells going downward because uh, You're going into the single crochet row at the top and you can see your stitches quite well All right the next stitch And the matching stitch on the back We're gonna just gonna do this all the way down and then we do the same with the other panel Just like this. So I'm slip stitching all the way across until I get to the end and then when I get to the end I'll just uh, you know tie off and hide my tails and go but well then you want to go do your other side. I already did my other side but don't flip your work uh, right side out yet. We'll have to after this we're gonna mark armholes off and then I'll show you how I sewed up the sides but remember you can sew them up any way that you see fit you know whatever your preferred method is for sewing doesn't have to be the same as me as long as it gets sewed right as long as it doesn't fall apart while we're wearing it we did a good job and you guys got this all right so I'm gonna finish mine up you go ahead and finish both your panels up and then I'll meet back up with you and we'll mark off some armholes and sew up the side all right, so once you get your side, both sides sewed on, now remember this is going to be on the inside so you won't see it. So when you flip it, it'll just be a straight seam. Now we're going to need to mark off our sleeve holes. Now you can do your sleeve holes as armholes or whatever, as big as you'd like. Um, I'm going to say probably about 8 inches would be probably pretty good for everybody. But you know what? What's good for everybody isn't good for everybody you know what I mean so you adjust it to your likings all right when we mark off for the sleeves um, if you're doing it sleeveless we're gonna do about uh, eight inch leave about an eight inch opening if you're going to add sleeves you probably you want to do about a seven inch opening all right so I'm gonna mark it off for eight inches about eight inches <clears throat> so I can do the sleeveless version but so put your piece together like this and we're gonna measure down. Um, I'm gonna make sure that my shells and my piece stitches are kind of lined up on both panels. So just give it a little look. See, there's my V stitch there, and that's just so I have both panels at the same point. V stitch there. Um, 
there's the next V stitch, there's the next V stitch. All right, so that's pretty well lined up there. So I'm gonna measure out eight inches. I don't even know if I went down far enough, but go ahead and take your tape. All right, so right about there is eight inches. So um, I'm gonna take a piece of yarn and I'm gonna tie that off. Now, you just wanna make sure that you do the same uh, arm or same um, sleeve, the same size. So I'm gonna grab a piece here and try to grab the same piece over here. I think I did. I think I did. All right, and I'm going to pull my yarn through there like that. And then take your two ends and pull them through that loop. And then now that's marked off and that'll come out really easy now. Or whenever you get up, so get ready to sew up there. You know, you can just take it out and do your sleeve. Now let me measure one more time. I just want to make sure. Eight inches. Let me do my other side. Got to be... My, this one's already sewn, so... Ain't nothing I can do about this one. I just want to make sure that they both are the same. You can never measure too many times. I don't think. I guess it's possible. Yep. Eight inches. There's my seam. Good. Like I said, if it's a little bit off, it's no big deal. All right. So, we got the armholes. Remember, just to do them both the same, around seven and a half, eight inches, or whatever you'd like. So now, I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to use a piece of yarn and a yarn needle this time. Um, now this one, I, I really had to take my time on. For some reason, I found it, it was just kind of hard to keep those, <laughs> the V-stitches and everything lined up with each other. You want to just take, a, take it a little bit at a time to make sure, because if it starts to go, you know, get hairy, when you get up to here, to where your marker's at, you'll have like a lot of extra on one side and not enough on the other. So you, you want to make sure that you keep it uh, nice and straight. Actually, if you want to start here at your sleeve hole, you can do that too. That's probably what I should have done, actually. <laughs> I'm going to go into that spot there. I didn't think about that till just now. You guys are probably going... The scope start at the top. Pull my yarn through. I'm gonna tie an eye. Oh, oh my gosh. It's embarrassing. All right. I'm gonna tie a knot there, and then I'll sew those tails in later. Now what I'm gonna do is just go down. But you still need to make sure you keep everything kind of lined up because I guess the same thing will happen at the bottom. You'll have a little bit more extra at the bottom than you do at the top. So, you just want to work. You can work, I usually work in the back and forth method. Grab a stitch here and try to get about the same stitch on the other side. I don't even need that marker there anymore. I could take it out. And see how I'm keeping them lined up. I use my fingers to keep everything lined up. I just look and make sure that I'm in the same spot on both panels. And I kind of put my fingers in like that. And that way I know that those are all exactly lined up. These two, well, just this part right here. And then I can work back and forth on it and sew it up. And I know that they're being sewed in the, in the same spot. And like, I said it's a little difficult because you're going through chain spaces and things like that and it's a little bit hard to see what making sure keeping everything's lined up but yes you can do it just take your time um, and just do a little bit at a time like I am back and forth grab a stitch from one side a stitch from another or actually a chain just go through the chain space if there's a chain space so a chain space on this side and about the same spot the chain space on the other side and we're going to do this all the way down and then we do the same on both sides 
Okay, so my toe knob, I flipped it uh, right side out. Now, something else I'm going to do, which you totally don't have to do, is I'm going to add um, a tie and I put some beads on it. Remember, you, you totally you don't have to do that. It's, that's up to you. Um, because it's meant to be, you know, um, a little shorter in the front. So I thought maybe I would add a tie on it. Um, something else, you know, like I said, you don't have to do that. You could put a belt. A belt would be cool, you know. I didn't think about that. Put a couple little belt loops here. Crochet a little belt. That'd be neat. And also, I was on the fence about... I'm just giving you guys ideas in case you don't want to do what I do. Um, I got these at Walmart. This at Walmart. I think this is really cool, too. You sew one here and one here. And then... I almost did this and then it shuts like that to keep to keep it shut you know if you want to otherwise you can just leave it hanging open sure but you know anyways so I'm just gonna show you since this is what I'm doing I'll show you how I did it so um what I did was I tried this on and then I just kind of um figured out where I wanted it to tie kind of like right right a little bit below my bust line um or a little bit below my my bust um it to tie uh you've seen it in the picture there you can, if, if you're doing this you can put it wherever you want but and then i just made sure that i did the same amount or matched up the sides so it was in the same spot like this on both sides and then i put a little stitch marker here until i got my ties made so this is how i got one made um I'll show you how to do it here. So got my yarn here. Leave a start off with a long tail. Well, a little longer tail than normal, you know. Uh, eight or ten inches, I guess. Just in case, better better more than not enough. All right. Now I started with a chain of fifty-one. Um, you can make your tie bigger or smaller. And in fact, I'll just go ahead and measure mine here. So you know if you want to make yours bigger or smaller. Okay. So chaining 51. For me here. Using the same hook size we used the whole time. I ended up with a tie. The tie itself is the, the chain itself, I guess. Yeah. Is, there you go. It's about 13 and a half inches, 13, 13 and a half. But then I added some beads. I got these beads at Walmart, if anybody would like to know. Um, and then it made it 14 and a half. All right, you don't have to put beads on it, though, if you don't want. I actually wanted to use wooden beads, but I didn't have any. So, <laughs> you just got to go with what you have. So, you can make your chain longer or shorter if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead because you see me in the picture and what it looks like tied with um, 51 chains. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 51 and I'll meet back up with you. All right, so I'm going to be doing single crochet, but I'm going to be doing it in that back bump. I don't really like to do that. I don't do it very often, but the reason why I'm doing it now is because I, I just made the single chain. And if you look, when you do it in the back bump, it makes a very nice clean edge on the other side. So, like if I was putting more rows on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, probably do it in a back bump. But So, if you don't know what the back bump is. So, we are going to single crochet in the second stitch from our hook. Um, we don't count this one that's on our hook. So, one and two. So, this one right here. Now, the back bump is, if you flip your chain... It's that one loop in the back. It's sometimes a little finicky, especially the first few. But you're just going through one loop on the uh, second stitch from your hook there. And then you single crochet into it. And then we just go in that back bump of every stitch. See it bumping up? It's just one loop. So that's where you put your stitches in that back bump all the way down. See it popping up? I said it's, it's not my favorite, but it does make a really nice clean edge. 
so that's why I'm using it for the string or for the yeah for the for my tie so it's just the one loop it's on the back of the chain and when you get to the end you should have 50 stitches you chain 51 but we single crocheted in the second stitch from the hook so that took one stitch away so now when you make it to the end working one single crochet in the back back bump of every stitch you'll have 50 at the end all right that is if you're following along with me so again here's the front normally normally i would go in like that but i have flipped my chain to the back and there's just that one bump all by itself and i'm just single crocheting into that all the way down okay and you can see it, it makes a nice clean edge on it all right now when you make it to the end um tie off about the same length that you have uh for your beginning chain like or for your that you did for your beginning tail i know it seems it, it seems like a lot and it probably is but like i said it's better more than an Better to have uh, more than not enough. All right. I'll see you at the end, all right? And I'll show you if you have beads. Uh, I'm going to string mine on. My beads to actually don't. I'll show you a trick. How about that? Just in case you have similar beads to mine. I'll see you at the end. All right, so I made it to the end. Nice, stretchy, clean chain here. Just go ahead and like pull through like that. And give yourself some, some extra. There we go. All right, now if you're not putting beads, that's fine. I'll go ahead and show you real quick. Okay, what we're gonna do is take the tails and tie them then uh well not down here if you're not putting bees on it you can just uh sew in your tails or something up the up the chain but now what i'm going to do is i want to feed my the beads on both of these strings and I'll tell you what, I have, the only yarn needles that I have are big ones and they don't fit through the beads that I have. So I'll show you a little trick just in case you have that problem or if you ever come across that problem. Alright, so I take the piece of fishing line or whatever that the beads came on. Or you can get a, a different piece of fishing line. Or you can use thread as well. Um, sewing thread. Sewing thread. So I'm going to cut these off. Um closer to equal oh. like that and then you take your piece of whatever the fishing line or if you're using sewing thread and tie it around these two pieces doesn't have to be like it's we're going to take it off it's not going to stay on there this just makes the threading beads that your needle's too thick for easier. Okay, so I have it on there, right? So what I'm going to do now is I don't even need a needle. I'm just going to thread them on with this. So I'm going to start with this one because that's what I did with the other one. And I'm going to put it through my fishing line like that. And then once I'm down here, I'm just going to pull it, tug on it, and there it went right on. There we go. See, because there's no way my needle will go, will go through these. It's just, or my, my yarn needle, for some reason, I got gigantic ones. It won't work at all. So this is just something you can do in case that ever happens to you. You can just use a piece of thread. Uh, or fishing line or embroidery thread or something you know something that's a lot that will go through your bead if your needle doesn't and just tie it onto your yarns or your yarn and then pull it through sometimes you gotta i'm going through two so i gotta tie it a little tighter 
Normally I just go through one. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry. There was something wrong with that bee. My husband had to drill it out. It was, I was trying to show you something, a trick, and then it wouldn't work. It's it, the, the bead was defaulted. He had to drill out the center of it. That's why it wasn't going through. But, but I just want to show you that. It does, this is something that you can do if your needle doesn't work. Just either use the fishing or whatever the string is that your uh, beads were strung on, or if they weren't strung on anything, you can use a some sewing thread. There we go. All right, now that that fiasco is done with, now what I'm gonna do is tie it once, tight. You can do more beads, less beads. And like I said, no beads, one more time. And then I'm gonna clip it the same length as my other one, or near the same length. So I did mine about, uh, Inch and a half, probably. There we go. All right, let's get these bad boys on here. All right, take your yarn needle and your chain you made and your sewing spot. And I'm just gonna sew it. I'm gonna pull it through that spot that I want to that I'm going to sew it to I'm actually going to sew it to itself but I'm going to pull it through that spot and then from the front and then you know I pulled it from the front of my went through my spot that I wanted it at through the front and now I'm going to flip it now I'm on the back and here's my little spot that I just pulled through I'm going to sew that to my main chain so it's just getting sewed to itself and you just sew it up till you think it's okay i'm gonna leave a little tail here on the end so i can just go back and forth a few times i'm actually going to tie that in a little knot i use knots oh man so lady that taught me to crochet when I was little see me using a knot I always got my hands swatted with whatever she had in her hand newspaper the lace water wooden spoon I'm just storytelling today I'm sorry you probably like to shut up and crochet all right I still to this day get nervous tying <laughs> I just tied that knot and I just looked out the door at the same time to see if anybody was coming. That's silly how things can affect you like that. All right, there's my knot. All right, and you just go do this, you know, just a few times. Uh, remember, you're, you're not sewing it onto the project because we went um, through our little spot. We're just sewing it to itself. Um, and that's how... And that's how I attach a chain. Most of the time. So whenever you feel like it's attached good enough, you can hide them little tails. Just kind of weave them in like normal. And then do your other one in the, in the opposite spot. Alright. Okay. So I'm going to finish this up. I think mine is probably good. I've done it a hundred times already. Sure, that's enough to hide the tail as well, but let me just do this for good measure. All right, so that's good. I'm cutting that one, then I'll take this one and just weave it in a couple times. And that'll be done, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side over here. And yes, I'll look over my shoulder when I tie, tie that knot. <laughs> Looking for that wooden spoon. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I got those tied on. 
Oh, it's so pretty and soft. I love the gold. Freddie Mercury would love this. I'll have to have a good Freddie Mercury name. You guys are already knowing it. Know it because I will already have this video on, but as of right now, I don't. So, <laughs> and I don't have a name for it, but I think it's something to honor Freddie, of course. All right, and we are finished now <clears throat> for the sleeveless version. If that's how you want to do it, we got the ties, all everything is good to go. And you've seen a picture of there what it looks like without sleeves. Now I'm going to show you how to add sleeves if you want. And remember, in uh, when we were marking off the sleeves, I said that if you wanted the sleeveless version, you would leave about eight inches here, and if you wanted to add sleeves, you would leave about seven. Well, I had to <clears throat> do the sleeveless first, so I added eight inches. So I have to sew up another inch real quick, and then I'll do it on the other side, and then we'll um, go ahead and add some sleeves. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the sleeves. Um, please. Uh, refer to the description box to see uh, what number of stitches you'll need around the sleeve area here for your size. So for mine, um, we're going to be doing the same stitch, um, but it's just going to be a straight multiple of six. We're going to lose that plus two that we had for the other for when we did it in a back and forth. Now we're going to be working it in a round. So. What we have to do is our sleeves here. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a multiple of six around them. So remember to refer to the description box for your size. But for this the one that I'm doing, I need to put 42 single crochets around this because 42 is a multiple of six. So what I want to do is uh, half of 42 is 21. So I want to start at the seam here and put 21 on this side up to the seam and then have 21 on the other that way it's uh even or you know what i mean so whatever your number uh, is make sure you split it in half and have half of them on one side and half of them on the other so the first row here is going to be single crochet remember i'm for the size i'm doing is going to be 42 which is a multiple six, so I'm just gonna go across and evenly space out 21 stitches up to the seam, and evenly space out 21 stitches on the other side, back to the starting point. And we just kind of start here at the seam, pull our yarn through, chain one, and then I'm gonna go back into that same spot, and that will be my first single crochet. Like that and like I said I'm just gonna do my best is to evenly space out uh, 21 single crochets um, across half of the sleeve up to the top of the seam and you space out your single crochets in accordance to your size there's two three four five six seven four like that all right so i've made it around i did 21 stitches on each side give me a total of 42 that is my multiple of six so i'm going to go ahead and end row one of the sleeve by slip stitching into my first single crochet so working in the round is very it's similar to working it back and forth but it might be seem it might be a bit different <clears throat> all right so now we're going to start row two. We're going to chain one. Now we're going to go back into this first stitch here that we just slip stitched into, and we are going to work a double crochet. Chain one. Triple crochet back into that stitch. So we're doing our shell type stitch. Chain one and double crochet back into that same stitch. And then we chain one skip two skip skip and single into the next chain one skip two skip skip and then we do our shell again so double crochet chain one triple crochet 
chain one and a double crochet and this is the pattern we're going to repeat all the way around so we chain one skip two skip skip single into the next chain one skip two skip skip shale into the next double chain one triple chain one double chain one and repeat all the way around until you have two stitches that remain again we're going to skip two skip skip single chain one skip two skip skip and shell into the next double chain one triple chain one double chain one skip two skip skip single into the next chain one skip two skip skip shell into the next so just go ahead and repeat this around till you have two stitches that remain all right so i've made it to the end of row two of the sleeve I did a single crochet. I have two stitches that remain. I'm going to skip those two stitches and I'm going to end by slip stitching into my first double crochet of that first shell. And that ends row two. Now rows three, four, five, and six are the repeat rows for the sleeve, okay? So we're going to go ahead and start row three. And what we're going to do is we need to slip stitch to this triple crochet. So slip stitch into the next chain one space. And then we slip stitch into the top of the triple. Like that. And then we're going to begin by chaining one and going back into that triple crochet and putting a single crochet into it. And then we're going to chain one. And then we're going to come down here to this single crochet and do <clears throat> our little crow's foot stitch that we do. So we're going to triple crochet into it, chain one, and then double crochet down here through the bottom two loops, just like we did on the body part. Chain one, and single crochet into the next triple crochet. chain one and then we repeat this all the way around for row three so again we do our little crow's foot here down here in this single crochet so we triple chain one and then go back and double through the bottom two loops of that triple chain one and single crochet into the next triple, so the middle of the shell there. Chain one and repeat by doing our little crow's foot here. Chain one, single crochet into the triple, chain one, repeat. So do that all the way around and I'll meet back up with you when we are back here at this single crochet where we started, all right? All right, so I come to the end of row three. I just did a cross foot here, and here's the single crochet that we started in. We're just gonna go in and end by slip stitching into that first single crochet, just like that. And now we're gonna start row four. So we're gonna chain one, and we're gonna go back into that same single crochet, and we're gonna single crochet into it. And then we are going to chain one. And inside this chain one space of the crow's foot we are going to work our shell so we're going to double chain one triple chain one and double and we chain one and then we're going to single crochet on top of this single crochet next single crochet and we're going to repeat chain one 
and we're going to do our shell inside this chain one space of our crow's foot so we're going to do our double chain one our triple chain one and double chain one and single crochet on top of the next single crochet chain one and repeat so we're going to repeat this all the way around and so we make it back here to our first single crochet that we made all right i've come to the end of a row four i just did a shell inside this crow's foot i chained one and i'm going to end by slip stitching into my first single crochet and we're going to go ahead and start row five row five is the start of it's a little bit weird but <laughs> so what we're going to do is we have to do a crow's foot here is made a little bit differently so what we're going to do is chain five one two three four five and that's going to count as our triple crochet in our chain one and now we're going to double crochet all the way down here into the first chain of that chain five there we go so that counts as our first crow's foot all right i know it's a little it's, i don't know it's fine it's fine it's fine <laughs> now we're going to chain one after that and we're going to single crochet into the next triple and this starting a repeat here chain one and then we're going to do our crow's foot right here in the single crochet down here so triple crochet chain one and double crochet into the side of the triple just like normal chain one and a single crochet into the next triple chain one and do our crow's foot here in the single chain one and single crochet in the next triple chain one crow's foot down here in the single chain one I'm just going to repeat that all the way around for round five it's very similar yeah it's a bit similar to you know the back and forth method i guess except for how the rows begin and end are a little different but other than that it's pretty much the same all right so i'm gonna go ahead and i will meet back up with you here at this first very weird crow's foot that we did don't worry it'll look normal we can only hope right <laughs> see you in a second all right coming to the end of row five so i did my single crochet in this triple and then i chained one now here we are at our very beginning weird crow's foot stitch we are going to end by slip stitching into the fourth stitch of the chain five so just leave one stitch in the middle there unworked slip stitch into that that ends row five we're going to go ahead and start row six which is the last row of the repeat so we're just going to slip stitch into the space of the first crow's foot and begin by chaining one and working a shell into that spot so double crochet chain one triple crochet chain one and double crochet chain one and then we come on over here and we're going to single crochet on top of this single crochet chain one and repeat shell here into this space of the crow's foot double chain one triple chain one double and then we chain one come on over here to the next single crochet and we single crochet into that single crochet chain one and repeat so we're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around so i'm doing a shell here into the crow's foot space oops chain one single into the next single chain one 
and shell into the next crow's foot. All right, so you're gonna repeat that pattern all the way around until we make it back here to our starting point. All right, so I'm coming to the end of row six, which is the final row of the repeat. I single crochet here and chain one, and I'm gonna end by slip stitching into my first double crochet of my first shell. And that is what we're going to do. We're going to repeat rows three, four, five, and six um, for however long you want your sleeves, but you want to end on a row four repeat, all right? So I'm going to start again with row three, and then I'll do four, five, six. Um, I did, though, for my sleeve, a total of 12 rows, and that's counting that first row of single crochet. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ten yep eleven twelve and the last row that i ended on was a row four repeat now you do your sleeves however long you want them or however short you want them it is completely up to you you don't even have to end on a row four repeat you can end on whatever row you want that's just what row i ended on all right so i'm gonna finish out my sleeves you finish out yours and then we will be done Yay! I got both of my sleeves done and I am finished. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I think it, I am sorry about that, those beads clanking around. I just had to do the no sleeve version first. And in order to get a picture of it completed, I had to put these beads on. And then when I had the, they were on there when I did the sleeves and they were just clanking all around. Normally I would put them on at the end, but doing two versions of a tutorial, I couldn't do that. So, I like it a lot. I think it turned out really nice. And I hope that you guys did too. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you guys would maybe give me a thumbs up and feed the algorithm monster. Leave me a comment below. It doesn't have to be anything nice. Just a little hi or a little emoji. You know, I ain't really looking for praise or anything. But um, just a nice little hi would be nice. I, you know. Um and if you do make this you like you like it and you, and you make it come show me on my bag of day crochet facebook page there is the place to be we that's that's like super nice there like everybody is super nice there everybody is super helpful and that is the best place to get quite if you have questions about patterns of designs of mine um that is the best place to get your questions answered right there on my facebook page so please Come on over if you haven't, and if, if you already a member, make this up. Show me show me what you, what yours looks like. I'm curious to see how what yarn you use and how you choose to do it. Or if you do it like mine, that'd be super cool too. So I'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks for watching. All right, bye guys.